Hey, well, we've got a uh, Chevrolet truck here, and this is a good learning lesson for you guys out there that are trying to learn how to tune up your motor to make it work better. And this truck runs great, but when you drive down the road, it has a bad ping, which is pre-ignition. Sounds like to guys that are used to listen for that, it sounds like a bunch of marbles rolling around inside the motor as you ease down on the gas. It go, it stops as soon as you let off the gas. So there's a number of things that could be causing that. Now we've already fixed this, but I wanted to kind of tell you the background of what was going on with it and show you some of the things that we did so that when you have that problem with yours, you'll know some of the parts that you can look for and try to figure out what's going on. So what is that? Well, that is pinging noise is pre-ignition, meaning that the gas blew up too early inside the engine and it makes kind of a rattling noise in there as you're stepping down on the gas and that's all because it creates so much heat that it really kind of causes an early misfire even though it runs good it still pings so what did we do to figure that out so we went down and actually took it out and just drove it that's the first thing you want to do and the first thing we discovered was the transmission was shifting very quickly so you'd take off and before you knew it you were already in the last year and then it we went went into lockup. So this transmission has the old overdrive transmission with a lockup on the torque converter and it was done shifting way before it should have been. And we the first thing we did was adjust that so that the shifts were later, so that it kind of caught the torque band of the motor and made it shift more smoothly and run better. And here's how you do that. I'm gonna let me get the air cleaner off here. And you might look at some of this stuff here as, as I'm unplugging it. This is a this is a a hose that goes to a charcoal canister down here, which back in the day was a way that the gas tank vented fumes and then eventually emptied that container and burned it back through the engine. And all these lines that hook up in there uh, are related to that. So most, most people were very confused and like myself, didn't particularly like all that. And, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure it really worked that well when it was new. And it certainly doesn't do much today. But it does vent your gas tank if it's working properly. It has what's called a purge valve on it. It's down there. There's two hoses. And the purge valve right in here uh, actually opens and lets the fumes out that it's absorbed from your gas tank. And it goes up through this line right here. And then the fumes are sucked into the carburetor and burned out as you're running the engine. Then when you shut it off, that purge valve closes and it starts uh, absorbing the fumes from the gas tank. And on all cars, you know, that's a that's a problem. If you park your car in the garage, sometimes you, you'll you smell gas fumes for a while and that's because the tank's not vented internally. It's vented externally most of the time through the gas cap and it takes a while for the heat that develops the fumes in the tank to go away. So don't get concerned about that. But if you come back out the next morning and you still smell those fumes, then you want to look into that. But if it lasts for about 15 or 20 minutes, air out your, out your garage until it kind of goes away and then you're good to go. So now what did we do here? Well, this is the, uh, right here is the shift cable right here. It's called the detent cable. And it's adjustable back here when you push that, if I can get to it, when you push this right here, you, you can take tension on or off of this cable as you are applying the, the gas like this with your pedal. You can see that it moves that, that detent cable. And if you loosen or tighten it, it will change the shift pattern. One way tightens it, it makes it shift quicker. When you loosen it, it let, makes it shift slower. So that's one thing that you could do. And that's what we did and actually got it where it shifts appropriately. But the um, shift pattern didn't really have much to do with the pinging. So the next thing we did was put an EGR valve on it. Now that's that goes over here on the side of the engine. And on this one, if you can come back around over here, right there is the plate where the EGR valve would have gone. We actually put one on there to see if that would have an effect. Now, what does the EGR valve do? It actually recirculates exhaust gases back into the engine, which reduces the amount of the mixture so it doesn't blow up so quick. It actually cools down the cylinders during the compression stroke, and it keeps it from pinging. They marginally work. Uh, they were real bad about one of the things that you'll notice with them. If they stick, the engine won't idle well. So you can take a screwdriver and get underneath it and pry it and if while the engine's running at idle. And if it's working, when you pry up on that piddle, it'll it'll actually make the motor run rough. 
uh, it doesn't come on. The EGR valve doesn't come on until you stepped on the gas. It, it idle, it's closed. That's the way it's supposed to work. And it's, it's connected to ported vacuum. That means there's no vacuum on the line until you step on the gas. That's ported vacuum. Va manifold vacuum means it's got vacuum all the time. So we replaced that, went out and drove it. Didn't help at all. So the next thing we did was adjust the timing. Now that did help quite a bit. Uh, the timing on a GM like this is done by moving the distributor right here. There's a bolt at the bottom that loosens the distributor up, and you can see that bolt right there. If you can, can you get a picture of that? That bolt holds the distributor so that it won't turn, but when you loosen it, you can turn the distributor, and the way you set the timing on this particular engine is you disconnect the vacuum advance, which is this module right here connected to, looking for that vacuum line, I'm not sure I can reach it from here, but it's connected to a vacuum line. On a GM, that's manifold vacuum. So the minute you plug that in, that module or the vacuum modulator or the vacuum that works the distributor will actually advance the timing. So the way you set it is you disconnect it. You go over here with your timing light and you set the timing at 6 to 10 degrees. Now on this one, we're lucky because we have a, uh, actually still have the specs on here. And if you look, timing on this one is at four degrees at 550 rpm so you slow the engine down to 550 rpms right here is where it shows you slow it down and then you put your timing light on here well we'll see if we can if this that's the other thing that's bad about these vehicles the, the pointer somehow goes away during your lifetime of this vehicle and then you're kind of guessing about where your timing mark is so i'm going to look and see if this one has one I don't I don't see a pointer on this. So you're going to have to kind of guess at it and slow it down until it starts running rough and then and increase the uh, timing on it till it starts to smooth out. And then you hook back up the vacuum to the distributor and it should jump to about 18 or 19 degrees. And that's the way the GMs work. You set the base timing, hook the vacuum back up, and it should jump about to 19 degrees. We did that and guess what? That pretty much fixed it. Except for one thing, when it did lock up, meaning that the torque converter locked up and you eased into it, it's still ping. So here's the old carburetor that was on there. This is an early carburetor. Or it's actually a, it's an electronic carburetor controlled by a computer. And this, this was called the MC solenoid and it tried to control the fuel mixture, which it did kind of an average job at very best. This one had quit working, but we were still not getting enough fuel to the engine. So what we did was replace this with a brand new Holly four barrel. And you guys, when you buy one of these, get an electric choke. Don't get the manual choke. It works so much better. Make sure you got 12 volts coming in right here to the choke and make sure it's key on so it's not running your battery down. It doesn't need to be through the battery. It needs to be come on when the keys on. We put that on there and guess what? That fixed it. So that, here's the summation of what happened. The timing was not correct. We reset it. The carburetor was not sending enough fuel anymore. It had gotten old and dirty and wasn't working right. We replaced it and we fixed the shift points on the transmission and the pinging went away. So this gentleman's going to be extremely happy with the way this runs because he's had trouble finding anybody that can fix this and it takes old people to remember how all this stuff works. So the other thing that we're having trouble with while I'm dimensioning this is that when you go down the road, you put your foot on the brakes real hard, back end locks up, the back brakes lock up. Now, what could that be? That's probably the proportioning valve. We haven't got to that part of it to fix it because we ordered a proportioning valve to fix it. We did take the rear brakes off. We checked the drums. We turned them to make because they were a little bit out of round. But when you stop normally, there's no problem. When you have to stop quickly, the rear end, actually the wheels lock up and squeal. So we're going to put a proportioning valve. Now, what does a proportioning valve do on the brakes? It actually holds off the back brakes when you're stopping long enough for the front brakes to engage because you don't have analog brakes on this. So you have no way to keep the back end from locking up quicker as the, as the weight of the vehicle kind of rotates to the front then that takes the weight off the back. And if they lock up or they, they, they apply right away, they'll lock up and the thing will kind of what we used to call fishtail. So we're hoping that the prop valve, which is the valve that actually holds the pressure off temporarily to the rear brakes, will fix that problem. And if there's anything more than I'm going to get back to you, but that's one thing you want to check if you're checking for a problem with that. So now I'm Barry Wilson, Wilson Auto Repair. Once again, I hope that I've given you some little bit of information that would help you fix your truck at home and get, make your weekend more enjoyable and make yourself feel good about yourself because you know how to fix your truck. Go to my uh, website, wilsonauto.com or hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that.